Foundational Church. We're glad you're here. So important to come together to worship God. We, um, coming off of our Thanksgiving holiday, I hope everybody had a, a nice time with family and friends. And really to take some time to think about what you're thankful for. Our world is, is so busy and rushed and, and layered. And sometimes we're thinking about everything else other than what the season's actually about. And so to really take some time to think about gratitude, reflect on it in your heart, and also to think about how you can live a life of gratitude. So I want to invite us all as we get started this morning to think about why we're here, to take all those other things that are racing through your mind. Maybe you've got a grocery list, or maybe you're thinking about some things you've got to do this coming week. Whatever it is, take all those things and just put them to the side for this next hour and focus on why we're here, which is to bow before God, to worship God, to be thankful, to seek a closer relationship with God, to take those things that we're thinking about, but not let them be the number one focus. Instead, give those things to God, ask for God's help, and have our number one focus be God, our relationship with God, our relationship with one another, and how we can be followers of Jesus Christ. We come together every week, and it's so important to just name why we're here. We're here to worship God. We're here to be together in Christian community and fellowship, to bring our hearts together, our spirits together, to know that when we gather, Jesus is present. And there's something very special about that, very sacred. And we're told to observe the Sabbath. You know, so often in our world now, Sunday's like any other day of the week. Many of you might remember, as I do, when, when Sunday was sort of a day uh, where everything was closed and, you know, you went to visit grandma and you did all those things. Well, nowadays, it's like any other day of the week. People are, on oh, putting a new roof on the house, right? You know what I mean? You're doing anything. And it's important for us to remember, no, this is Sabbath. We need to remember why we're here. We need to remember what this day is about. Maybe you're coming off of a stressful Thanksgiving. I know some, for some people it could be a little stressful. Maybe you're coming off of a wonderful one. Maybe you've had some other things happen throughout this weekend. Whatever it is, know that God is with you. We come together to worship. We can release all these things to God, and we can really focus on gratitude. So we say all that as we get started. We're glad you're here. I'm going to have Paula introduce herself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Paula Anderson, and I will be your lay reader. Do we have any celebrations or prayer requests this morning? We will pass the microphones. Unfortunately, we've had some folks pass away here in our congregation. And um, I'll just tell you a little bit about it here. Um, Charlotte Crockett, you might have seen that in your, in your email, or if you get the um, obituary notices. And she was such an active member here. We're, we're, you know, it's hard for me to even talk about it because I'm going to get emotional, but I was very close with her. She was one of the first people I met 18 years ago when I came here. And uh, she's going to be very, very missed. But her service is going to be Friday. I think Ray's going to make an announcement about that in a moment. Um, Jessica Hall's father, Joel, had passed previously. His service is going to be Saturday here. And then we have found out yesterday that Rose Belowski from our congregation passed away. She had been in Countryside Manor. She thought she was doing well. So this was a very sudden thing. And we don't really know exactly what happened. But um, she just happened yesterday, so we don't have any service information for her yet. And then also, we have two others that we want to keep in our prayers, <clears throat> in addition to everybody on the prayer list. Roseanne Hannon had a fall over the weekend, went to the hospital, they didn't keep her, but she's very sore and kind of knocked up in the ribs, <clears throat> so keep her in your prayers. And then also, Mary Mitchell is in the hospital, and um, we want to keep her in our prayers as they kind of do some tests and, and look after her. So, a lot of prayer requests, we'll take any, any of the others that saw some hands. I just want to give a follow-up on the Christmas past. Um, the leftover donations were redonated to the Plymouth um, Congregational Church Thrift Shop, and then some went to Aunt to Hand in Bristol. So we'll keep um, passing that on. Um, prayers for um, Rose Walowski's friends and family um, on her passing, and then prayers for our friends Brian and Denise who are having some health issues. Hi, good morning everyone. I want to thank everybody for keeping my husband Gary in your prayers. He had his knee replacement surgery on the 17th. Um, he would have been here this morning, but the physical therapist came yesterday and bent the knee. So, <laughs> he, 
He thought he was doing well because he was walking around. He didn't realize that the next round would be bending. So he wanted to thank everybody and hopefully he'll be here um, next Sunday. Thank you. We'll keep the prayers going for him. Thank you. I actually can walk. I can see you walk with our cane. All right. Good news. I bring in just in case. And um, my sister Donna was supposed to have her back on uh, Tuesday. Fell going into her house. Ended up in the hospital. And now she's home bound. That's in the way now. Families, you know. That's the way it goes. That's right. But I, I won't show you how I walk. I walk like my grandson. Great grandson. <laughs> <laughs> um, SJ is having his tonsils out on Tuesday, so if we can spare a prayer for him, uh, he's a little nervous, but yep. uh, I appreciate it. I had that surgery many years ago. You'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> Ice cream. Yes. <laughs> for my niece, Karen. Um, she's been in the Yukon for uh, almost a week. She has um, had an infection on the brain. Ooh. So really, she needs a lot of prayers. Thank you. My dad, Bernie, turned 79 yesterday. All right, Bernie. And I wasn't here. I don't know if anybody has Bernie had her birthday on the 12th. Wow. Yes. And welcome back to Maine, Janet. It's nice to see you. Yes. Pennsylvanians. Yep. I'd like to wish my brother a happy birthday yesterday. Jake. Yay. 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 Sunday right after Thanksgiving, you know, the Sunday that we're in now, in a lot of years in the way the Christian calendar falls, that starts the season of Advent. But the way the calendar falls this year 
is we get kind of an extra day because Advent does not start until next Sunday, which is why we don't have the tree up yet. <clears throat> However, <laughs> it is still sort of a transitional week. It's that time of after the Sundays after Pentecost and now transitioning toward Advent. And so because of that, we always talk, call that transitional week uh, Reign of Christ Sunday. It's a Sunday to really focus on Christ being King. It's, it's kind of a chance to recenter yourself as you journey then into Advent. So we'll be talking about that throughout the worship service today. Let's join together now in our unison call to worship, which comes from Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, we come together today, and we start by saying thank you. We're now entering into a holiday season. We've had Thanksgiving Day. We've transitioned into the weekend now. And for a lot of people, the Christmas celebrations will begin. For a lot of people, the, the entire month of December becomes a month of various parties and gatherings and celebrations and events. As we enter into this holiday season, help us to keep our focus on you. Help us to remember why we have this season of Advent. Help us to remember that it is a time to prepare our hearts and as we start to journey toward Advent, we're not quite there yet. And so today, O oh God, we come before you and we bow before you and we acknowledge that Christ is our King. Help us in the midst of this world that pulls us in so many different directions. Help us to remember that you are God. That all these things of the world are not God. You are God. That all these things of the world are not our king. You are our king. Help us to be able to navigate through this busy season and to keep you as our priority. Help us to journey through this busy season and to think about the relationships in our lives. So often we may be rushing about and whether it be material things or whether it be cooking or whatever it is, all of a sudden becomes the thing that we're focusing on. Help us to release all of that to focus on our relationship with you, our relationship with one another, and help us to seek you every day. Today we come before you and we ask for your guidance. We ask that you give us all direction for our lives. And we ask that in all things your will be done. Show us all, remind us all, that not only do you love us, but you also call us into this relationship with you. And you also call us all to be followers of Jesus. Help us to take the faith that's in our hearts and also to live that faith. If there is somewhere you want us to be this season, open our eyes to it. If there's a, 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 some words you want us to use, open our, our minds to those words and show us those words. If there's a way that you want us to be putting our gifts to use, <coughs> Give us that direction. Show us. Teach us every day. Help us. Without you, we are nothing, but with you, all things are possible. If we're hurting, or if we know somebody else that's hurting, give your embrace. Remind us, remind them they are not alone. Help us to reach out to people. There's a lot of people that find the holidays very difficult because they feel lonely or they feel that they've lost all hope or they feel forgotten. 
Put us in those places to be your agents in this world. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing together number 64. Okay, now my first 
question is, did you have a good Thanksgiving? And the second question is, are you all excited and geared up and joyful to go back to school tomorrow? <laughs> and the parents are like, yes. <laughs> um, the next question is, who was here last week? Raise your hand if you were here last week. Some of you were not. Okay. The ones that were here, did you do the homework? Okay. You want to tell me about it or no? And those that were here, I'm going to give you the homework now. You want to tell me about it or no? Okay. Last week we gave out little crosses, and the, the homework was you got to give the cross to someone else. Okay. I gave it to my sister. Let me get let me get them because I still have them over here, and then you guys can do it this week. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of each size, a small one and a big one, okay? You get to keep one and you get to give one away, okay? Yep. If you 
want. It's easier to just make it. You can make it out of paper. You can make it out of anything. It doesn't have to be an expensive project. Cardboard. And you, so you could go on the internet at home. You can make it out of metal. Look up Chris Mons, and then you can make something, maybe put it on your tree at home. What do you think about that idea? Especially crosses, because everybody knows the cross. I mean, for the most part, we all know the cross. So even if you just made a few crosses and put that on your tree at home, I think that would be nice. Okay, let's take up your offering. Don't forget the homework. You've got to give the cross to someone and share that God loves them and that you are a person of faith, and that's why you're sharing this cross. Them, 
Truly, I will tell you, just as you did to one of the least of those who are the members of my family, and you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accused, depart from me into the eternal fire, and prepare for the devil and his angels. And I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink, nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that you saw your, you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and you did not care of you? Then he will answer, truly I tell you, just as you did, not to do with one of the least of these, and you did not to it to me. And these will go away in eternal punishment, but the righteous in eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. You are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. Last week I was talking about how it's so important for us to, to just open our eyes and look around. Sometimes when we're looking past the things that are right in front of us, the needs, um, places where we can be servants of God. Sometimes we want to make things harder than they have to be. We want to say, well, I know there's a lot of need in Hartford, or I know there's a lot of need in uh, you know, Ukraine, or I know there's a lot of need in Israel, but what can I really do here? And I was talking about how it's so important to just look around, be open, and notice the things that are right in front of you, the things that are right within your own neighborhood, the, uh, the things that are right within your own job, the things that are right within your own relationships. Um, sometimes we're so busy thinking that something has to be bigger or further away that we miss the things that are right in front of us. <clears throat> and I think that that carries forward into today's lesson because Jesus is talking about when people are the least of these, meaning people that are, that are really, really hurting, what are we doing or not doing? And sometimes I think we overlook people that might be right in front of us that you could give a cup of water to or visit. All those things he just named. Feed them, clothe them, give them a cup of water, visit them. Because we're always wanting to make something that's always got to be this big, grand thing. And I, what can I really do? Just little old me. But it's, it's so important to never overlook any of that. I always think that Thanksgiving weekend's a great time to do some reflection. You know, every, not everybody, but a lot of people get a couple of extra days off. So it's a, a great chance to do some reflection. Really assess your life and think about what can I be doing within my own family, within my own neighborhood, within my own church. What can I be doing to strengthen my relationship with God and strengthen my relationship with other people? Sometimes we take a lot for granted. We think, well, that person knows I love them. I just want to emphasize this so much because it really hit me hard when Charlotte Crockett died. I was very close to her. Please don't ever take for granted anything, any relationship, any moment. Tell the people you love them, embrace them. I was so thankful I, I did get to talk to her. Uh, we, we knew, sometimes in life you know what's coming. And we knew there was going to be transition with comfort measures, hospice and all that. I was so thankful I got to sit there and, oh, <laughs> When you're close to somebody, you, we had a wonderful time of pouring out, and I'm so thankful for that, and I want to encourage all of you. The people that are right in front of you, tell them what they mean to you. It's so, so very important. Little preface, now let's have some humor. I'm going to burn hope you guys got some. You probably got up forgot. That was just my little preface. And I'm going to invite some audience participation today. That's why I'm carrying the other mic. We've got the students in the service with us. Students, you can participate too. Matter of fact, I'll ask you the question first so you can think about it. This is my question for audience participation. <clears throat> this is called Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. As I said before, it's that transitional week between the Sundays after Pentecost, which is what we were in, Christian calendar, I'm talking about Christian calendar, Sundays after Pentecost, now, it's reign of Christ, and then starting next Sunday will be Advent, which is the season of preparation that prepares us for Christmas. It's that week to kind of reset, 
and to think about what is the most important thing in the world, which is our relationship with God, and who is God? God is our king. God is our alpha and omega. God is our everything, our all in all. And so my number one question is, what does it mean to you for God to be first in your life? What does it mean to you that God is king, that God is first, that God is head of all? It's so easy in our world to think something else is the head of all, to think that money's the head of everything, or to think that power is the head of everything, or to think that fame, or to think that accolades, or to think that worldly success, we get pulled in so many directions. <clears throat> it's so easy to think that all those things are the head of all. But as people of faith, there's only one head of all, and that is God. What does it mean to you that God is the king, that God is the head of all, that God is the priority, that God is number one? What does that mean to you? Second question is, <clears throat> you can answer either one of these in any, in any order. Does anybody have any holiday traditions, Christmas season traditions, things that are coming up in this next month, that you do in your life of faith that's a way that you try to give? I'm not talking about the presents that we give at Christmas. I'm talking about something a little extra. I know Robin has one. Will you tell us about it in a minute? Okay. Something that you try to do, maybe you make a meal for a neighbor, maybe you uh, fill up the Toys for Tots thing. Is there something that you try to do, either individually or with your family, that's a little something extra this season, that is from your faith, and that maybe you'll be willing to share with all of us, because it might inspire the rest of us to take on either that practice or a similar practice. Because I know a lot of people have some very wonderful practices, and I want to hear about them. So what does it mean that God's number one? What kind of practices do you have this season that are from your faith and are you're, where you're trying to do something for the community or maybe for somebody in need? Am I giving you enough information to get you, get you thinking? Okay, let's share these. <laughs> what song in Mexico, what song in Mexico <laughs> See, Burton knows how to do <clears throat> What song in Mexico do sheep sing at Christmas? Fleece Navidad. <laughs> All three of these are pure gold. Exactly my type of joke, which is corny, corny, corny. Apparently, <clears throat> you cannot. <laughs> you are. These are like. I'm afraid of this one. Apparently, you cannot use beef stew as a password. <laughs> it's not strong enough. <laughs> Okay. Um, 
I've always had this thing that uh, stays with me and I actually have tattooed on me that God is greater than our highs and lows, meaning he is there for the good, the bad, the ugly, but he is the king of it all. You should be grateful for every experience in your life because God is with you. And he is the reason. Okay. Okay. For me, every morning when I wake up, I'm a cancer survivor, 10 years. And you never realize in your life, you know, when you're brought up, you go to church every Sunday. My background was I was Roman Catholic. So every holy day of obligation, every Sunday. And, you know, when life happens. And for me, when I got sick, when I was diagnosed, it really made me realize how important my faith was. And not only because when you get sick, it's like every day. When I wake up every morning, I just thank God. I just say, thank God, thank you for another beautiful day. It could be miserable outside. It could be, you know, really not the best day, but I'm grateful for every day. And when you're going through the treatments and everything, you do, you have a lot of time to think. And I would sit there and I'd go, you know, it's amazing the things you take for granted. Like you said, you never know when it could be your last goodbye. You know, so it, to me, God has always been, I think, number one in my life. And it's the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning. I thank him for everything. And when I go to sleep, I thank him for everything. And what I do every year is I find a family. We, Gary and I adopt a family. We try to find out what they need. And... We'll give them everything that they need, a meal, um, gifts, or whatever. But it's just, you know, re reach out. You never know. Yep. You never know who you can touch in life. Beautiful. Anybody else want to share? I go back to my teaching confirmation days, and I like to say, what would Jesus do? <laughs> so if you're conversation with someone or doing something, sometimes it makes you really think what's important and what would Jesus do. Yes. And also the golden rule, that was my favorite. And you remember what they said about it? Yeah. Remember we were talking about treat others the way that you yes. want to be treated? Yes. And they said, we got better than yes. Zach and Charlotte. Treat yes. others even yes. better than you want, than you want to be treated. treated. Yeah. We always talked about that. Anybody else have anything you want to share? What does it mean that God's number one? And what kind of practices do you do? And I won't often share hers. So get your speech ready. <laughs> well, in the past, in our family, we used to buy crap like this five dollars, ten dollars. And you're buying things that really don't mean much to other people. So instead, you know, we ask everybody to bring that five or ten dollars worth of groceries and we donate it to the local food. That's a very nice practice. God gave me the strength to pick out families in the church or in the town to help somebody once a year with the help of the ladies that you like hearing. Yes. Adopting a family or doing what you can. And what God means to me is I, every day I'm so grateful to be here and I know I have the strength to face anything that comes into my field. And it's just an uh, overwhelming sense of peace. And one thing that my husband, my former husband, passed away three years ago, and I used to do, instead of giving each other gifts, we would, um, each member of the family would give money and we donated to St. Jude's. Mm. Another nice one, yeah. Hopefully these are inspiring. Sometimes when you hear from your peers, it sparks something within you. Uh, 50 years ago, I was in the hospital with uh, cancer surgery. I was 33 years old. I didn't think I was going to make it to 35. But I went by the, uh, and it was mentioned here today, God's will. I thought, who do I think I am? You know, you, you obviously want to uh, not be part of your system, but it was there. And I felt, not my will, but thine be done. It worked, I guess. Sorry. Yeah. So submitting, submitting to the will of God versus thinking it's always all about us. Um, I too am a cancer survivor, and um, 
you know, was not supposed to be sitting here today. Um, that was 20 years ago this Thanksgiving. And um, one of my cousins gave me a big sign, and it said, um, don't tell God how big your storm is. Tell the storm how big your God is. Mm. And I had that hanging on my kitchen wall for years. Um, I think it kind of fell apart after a while. But I was also during that time just gifted with a positive attitude. And that was God working in my life. And I, you know, because of that, I was able to help everyone around me. My children, my husband, my, my you know, mother, everybody. And, um, so thankful, so thankful for that. Yes. Robin has a little cracker she does that I learned about last year. Are you going to say it? Um, you want me to say it? What? I forgot what you call it. Elfing? Huh? Yeah. She has this practice she calls Elfing. E L F. Elfing. Where she goes around to loved ones. And even people that you don't know that well, right? But you know them. And she puts something on their doorstep. A little something. It could be like cookies or a little gift. But she does not say who it's from. She just says, love your elf, right? Or something like that from your elf. And then they have to try to figure out, who is this anonymous person that gave me this? And sometimes they figure it out, sometimes they don't, right? But she's not claiming any accolades from it or anything. It's just a little anonymous and it goes out to people, and you can imagine the joy that that brings people to find this anonymous gift on their doorstep. To know that someone's thinking of them, it doesn't have to be anything huge, but it just uplifts them. And I thought that was a great practice when I learned about that elephant. I thought that was great. <clears throat> For me, a lot of things go back to childhood. I talk about this a lot. A lot of things go back to childhood, and I'm very thankful that even though, at all, as all of us, my childhood was not perfect, but I had a lot of love, especially, um, you know, I was mostly with my mother, and so I had a, a ton of love from her, but I also had it drilled, and I mean drilled in me. Zach, I know you like to talk a lot, <laughs> but she used to say, do not ever get too big for your bridges. <laughs> and she used to say, if you know somebody that's in need, you better help. She used to drill that into my sister and I. You better help, you better help, you better be there for people. And her whole job, I, I've told this before, her whole job was social services. <clears throat> and her department was the food stamp department. So she saw deep, deep need, deep, deep poverty. Every day of her life. Can you imagine? Eight to five every day, all you see is need, need, poverty, need. And so she drilled it in us. We didn't necessarily have a lot ourselves, but we had enough. And she drilled in there, you better help, you better help. And so Jesus talks about this lesson. Whatever you do for the least of these, you are doing for me. It's so important for us to remember that. Or when you don't do for the least of these, you have not done for me. It is Christ the King Sunday. It is a reminder to us that Jesus Christ is number one. Please don't let the world, it's so tempting, it's so easy, especially as humans. Please don't let the world pull you into these other directions of thinking money is number one or power is number one, or fame, or accolades, or worldly success, or being, who can be the busiest? That's another one big in our world. If you're the busiest, it somehow makes you better. Don't let that pull you into thinking that's number one. If there's one thing I miss about the South, people always say this, I'll close with this thought. People always say, well, don't you miss the South? It's so great, the weather's so great, the prices are cheaper, less taxes, blah, blah. and I like the Four Seasons. I like our health care up here. I like our schools up here. But the one thing I do miss, there's a slower pace. People will sit on the porch and talk for four hours. And they will realize the meaning of that. Up here, everybody's got to be busy. I miss that, like, come on, it's going to be four hours of just sitting. And it's valuable. Up here, that's not valuable. You sat for four hours? <laughs> we got to reclaim, um, what do they call that, quality and quantity of time. you got to think about the quality and the quantity of time, how you're using your time, and get into that quality. This season, please keep God number one.
The world's going to tell you that all these other things are number one. All that is a lie. The truth is, God is number one. And all these stories we heard today, even and maybe especially in the midst of life's hardships, right? We heard that time and time again. In the midst of life's hardships, is it affirmed, confirmed, and reaffirmed to us that God is number one? It doesn't mean life will be easy. Everybody here named the hardship. But God is with us in those times. God loves us, and then God calls us to realize that depth of love, and then to go into the world and live that way. Because there's a lot of people that need to see that from us. They've written God off, or they just ignore God, or they're angry with God, or they just never were taught about God. It's our job as followers of Jesus to go into this world, just like we handed those crosses out to the kids, to go into the world and show people the difference that God has made for us, what it means that God is number one for us, and share that gospel with them and help to transform lives. Not because we're doing it for us, but we're trying our best to shine God's light, to be agents of God, because we believe that it mattered that Jesus died on the cross. It mattered. It wasn't just something flippantly done. It mattered. And it mattered so much that we want to go out and share it. Please, this season, keep God number one. Amen. Amen. Little change in the bulletin. We're going to do the Thanksgiving waltz during the offering. And at this time, we're going to have Kurt sing a very special song about being thankful. You can believe I'm very relieved that I don't have to do any waltzing. I'm not much of a dancer. <laughs> but this little song of mine is called We Thank Thee. Uh, it's a little piece of country music that provides an appropriate conclusion to the festive Thanksgiving long weekend. Because it reminds us of all the commonplace day-to-day -day things the good Lord gives us, which we may take for granted. For example, birds that sing, sunshine, the air that we breathe, and the light of the moon. We 
bless them. Please multiply them. Please use them according to your will. Please bless all of us and use all of us according to your will. May we live our lives as an offering to you. Use us every day, our words, our actions, our thoughts, our prayers, to be a light for you in this world, to be disciples of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. Amen. And we will sing together our closing hymn, number 322.